Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is July 12th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now, for this particular exploration, I am going to go into a rather sticky discussion. And it's, it's focusing in on how much we need to cut emissions to make the world as safe as we can. And in all honesty, the, the faster we cut emissions, the safer the world will be. Although we are looking at serious consequences from human-caused climate change, and we are also looking at a, a degree of uncertainty about how serious those consequences will be. So I, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and just dive into this. Now, Eric Holdhouse today op opened a, a discussion that, that needs to be had. And he says that if we want to keep warming, global warming below 1.5 degrees Celsius, the science states that the entire US needs to be 100% carbon free by 2035. And the world it's in, in total needs to be 100% carbon emissions free by 2050. And, and he's right, but I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a caveat. I'm going to say that if we're going to have a chance at keeping below 1.5 degrees Celsius, we need to do this. There's no guarantee that we will if we do it, but, but it gives us the best shot. And, and in all honesty, for the sake of ourselves, because we're going to see this, and for our children, this is an endeavor that we need to undertake as a global civilization. So I'm going to dive into this a bit further. How, how do we understand how much the world is going to warm? And, and in a word, it's radiative forcing and carbon dioxide equivalent gases in the atmosphere. So the science ha understands very clearly that heat trapping gases and the level of heat trapping gases in the atmosphere have a direct impact on global temperature. And, and, the and the way it does this is by reducing the amount of long wave radiation that leaves the Earth at the top of the atmosphere, and that creates an added forcing in watts per meter squared. Now, the way we measure this is in carbon dioxide equivalent. Now, carbon dioxide itself is the main heat trapping gas resulting in, in the highest level of this heat trapping that is ongoing for the Earth's atmosphere, generating what is known the greenhouse effect. But in addition, we have other greenhouse gases that provide a, C, a carbon dioxide equivalent forcing, which is additive on top of present atmospheric carbon dioxide values of around 405 parts per million as of 2017. And this site, NOAA, provides it's the Earth System Research Lab site is a good reference to keep track of where we are presently with regards to how much warming we can expect and how much heat trapping gas is in the atmosphere, which gives us that baseline. Now, the way that we interpret this as a global society is, is, is through the combined work of sciences, science through the IPCC. And the IPCC has given us a, a baseline of various different climate scenarios based on how much carbon dioxide equivalent gases are released into the atmosphere in total by the end of this century. So lower emission scenarios equival equivocate for lower levels of at atmospheric forcing in, in the form of watts per meter squared at the top of the atmosphere, and higher levels of CO2 equivalent equivocate to higher levels of radiative forcing at the top of the atmosphere, and relative global temperature change based on model understandings of how sensitive the Earth climate is over this time period, so how much it will tend to warm. So for example, in the lowest level scenario, according to IPCC, you end up with about 1.5 degrees Celsius warming by the end of, the uh, of, of this century. 
And with the highest level fossil fuel burning scenarios, you end up with about 4.9 degrees Celsius warming by the end of the century. Now, there's a lot of difference between 1.5 degrees Celsius and nearly 5 degrees Celsius. And of course, the various models involved don't just provide this number, they provide a range. So some models will show that 490 parts per million CO2 average equivalent in the Earth's atmosphere through 2100 will provide, say, 1.8 degrees Celsius or 1.9 degrees Celsius or even 2 degrees Celsius warming. And other models may show that, that the warming level is a bit lower, maybe closer to 1.4 or 1.3. Now, the error, though, tends to move on the side of warmer and less on the side of cooler because there's a lot of uncertainty about what is known as Earth system feedbacks. And these include carbon feedbacks, loss of carbon sinks, changes to Earth's albedo, like if you lose ice sheets, you have less albedo, less, less reflectivity, and so you get more heat. So, but, but this provides a good range. Now, the scenario that Eric Holthouse is talking about is sticking in with the RCP 2.6 degrees Celsius scenario, which is the lowest emission scenario. And, and that requires major commitments to cut carbon dioxide emissions as rapidly as possible. And according to this article from physics.org, it just restates what Eric Holthouse is already stating, is that by 2050, carbon dioxide emissions would need to fall to net zero globally, meaning that any CO2 released in, into the air would have to be offset. And renewable energy sources, mainly solar and wind, and transportation sources like electrical vehicles and, and perhaps you know, biofuels replacement would by then be the dominant energy source and burning coal would be a distant memory. Now beyond 2050 to hit the RPC, uh, C, I'm sorry, RPC 2.6 scenario, which is the lowest scenario, you also need to have various means of pulling carbon down from the atmosphere. This is after a complete energy transition. And that's to keep that radiative forcing down to an average of 490 parts per million over a CO2 equivalent over the course of this century. And as we can see in the NOAA ESRL number, we're already above that average. So, so we've got work to do, serious work, serious innovative efforts, if we're going to keep the Earth below 1.5 C. Now I want to look at a model that, that shows that, that, that's a bit on the warm side that was recently produced by Climate Central to, to show you the varying ranges of, of temperature uh, projections. So, so sh show even under RCP 2.6, the lowest emission scenario, how much we might miss the, the 1.5 C number. And, and, and this model is showing that that will probably hit around 1.7 C warming according to its projections under even the lowest level warming scenario. Now, now one thing to look at here is that this model is showing that we cross the 1.5 C threshold even, even under the most aggressive emissions reduction scenarios by 2030. And, and that's, uh, that's, that's a line that, that we need to look at. Um, if we're going to avoid 1.5 C warming or even have a shot at it, we've, we've really got to be very aggressive. Now, in other scenarios, um, you know, we're, we're actually rather close to, to 1.5 C in this, in this model selection. And many models that are beyond the RCP 2.6 scenario, which, which includes rapid transition to renewable energy and clean energy, we exceed 2C by or, or before 2050. And in the worst case scenario, again, we're, we're close to about five degrees Celsius warming, which is, is a catastrophic world environment. So, so just to give you an idea where we are and, 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 and to let you know that um, though science is very accurate when it comes to warming scenarios and there is good work being done there, there, is, there is also a degree of uncertainty. So erring on the side of caution is a moral benefit.